everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and welcome to another episode analysis of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Today's choice is brought to you by the many people who suggested it. When I look for a children's horror show to discuss, I typically seek out ones that strike a chord with people, and that can be because it's nostalgic, or it's new and people are interested, or because it stands out as frightening. Obviously, when you're working with a series, some episodes will stand out more than others, and this one, called The Tale of the Dark Music, has definitely stuck with people for its darker story. I enjoyed this episode because it felt a little more adult. In fact, I kept drawing parallels between this and other popular books and movies in the horror genre. I always find going back and watching these shows interesting because there's not a lot that separates young adult horror from adult horror. The biggest changes are what becomes of the characters and the concept and permanence of death. And yes, obviously any kind of gore would be toned down, but I'm talking more about the subject matter. The fact that there are adolescents in shows like Are You Afraid of the Dark, Goosebumps, and Eerie Indiana doesn't speak for their maturity level. Take books like It and Stand By Me by Stephen King, which heavily featured children as the protagonists. The work of King is a little more diabolical and has a sharp focus on problematic people, whereas horror for children and preteens don't dive deep into people's interpersonal relationships. The fear comes from the monsters, the dark, the fictional creation that the stories revolve around. Those fears evolve as you get into adult horror, where the scariest things are often the people who become the monsters. That being said, this episode takes a lot more from adult themes, so I'm keen to discuss it. As we begin, we see the Midnight Society getting ready for their next tale. Frankie, the tough guy of the group, is late because another member, Eric, left him behind to navigate in the dark. Great! You know, thanks a lot! You be careful with that mask, my father's! I gotta make you eat this! This is a problem for Frankie, as he is indeed afraid of the dark. Apparently, the you in our interrogative show title is Frankie, and the answer to it is yes. Sit down, Frank. Don't be strange. Gary is busy staring at the flames of the fireplace like a goddamn pyromaniac, and no one seems to notice. Eric decides to push Frankie's buttons even further by telling a tale as old as time, the fear of the dark. At least that's what he says it's about. I found this introduction misleading as it's not entirely about the dark as much as it's about the dark music. And by dark music, they clearly mean blood flowers by The Cure. Eric begins telling his story, which centers around a young boy named Andy. Him, his mom, and his sister move into a deceased uncle's house and ah, Dave Mustaine! This is Coda, the neighborhood punk. He does not appreciate being nearly run over by a bike and has an automatic dislike for Andy because his uncle was a weirdo. I love how his hair flows in every shot. Welcome to the neighborhood. Andy's mom haphazardly tries to put up some blinds, but needs a ladder, so she sends Andy to the basement to grab one. His sister mocks his apprehension. What's the matter, Andy? Afraid of the dark? I'm not afraid of the dark as much as I am creaky wooden stairs like this, genuinely. When I see these, all I can think about is the wood giving out and falling between the broken planks. I'd love a horror story just based on stairs that might break at any given moment. Andy loses sight of the goal of finding his mom a ladder about two seconds in, and instead starts messing around with a radio. He plugs it in, and it doesn't work, so he shouts at his mom to flip a switch. As the music comes on, a weird-looking door starts rattling. I heard that. Sorry. As soon as Andy turns the station to some heavy metal, it opens up and two red eyes peer back at him. Hello, Andy. Come on in. Sounds friendly, I'm in. We check back with the Midnight Society and everyone is enjoying the story, except Frankie, who is missing. Nobody seems to care due to Frankie being too strange. Don't be strange. Andy runs up to inform his mom what happened. It talked to me. It said, come in and I'll suck your blood or something like that. That is not what it said. Come on in. He's not a vampire, he's an evil ghost monster entity. Jeez, Andy, get your supernatural tropes straight. Andy's mom is pretty sure it's just rats, even though rats can't talk and are typically friendly. His mom flings open the door with reckless abandon and... Andy? It's a bunch of wine, thank God. Honey, come over here. And a lifetime supply of pink shirts for our pink shirt cult. Nah, just an empty cellar. Mom takes this time to ridicule her son for seeing and hearing things and keeps insisting it's a rat. A single talking rat. Cut to Coda and his weird ass dad sporting this unfortunate ensemble. It's a Beetlejuice Hulk Hogan hybrid, run! And don't give me no lip! Did he just start a conversation with that? No hi or what's up son, just don't give me no lip. Next time I see someone working on something, I want to walk up to them, shake a sandwich at him and say that. And don't give me no lip! As Andy is completing his paper route, he accidentally knocks over the cleaning bucket Coda was using and it drenches him. He's not pleased. Meet the real man. Andy makes a run for his house. 
Wait, his address is 420? Blaze it! He runs out back to the cellar and barrels on in. Now we get to see even more weird, useless junk! His younger sister sneaks up behind him and antagonizes him a little... And are we just gonna ignore the hand in the jar? How long has that been there? That evening, Andy inquires about his uncle. Oh, he was a strange guy. And these are his ashes. She also mentions that he died in the basement, realizes she might be frightening her kids, then stops and tells him to go change the laundry. In the basement. Mom of the year. Oh, Mom. <laughs> I'm filthy. I'm Roses. Andy listens to music while he sorts clothes, and this has nothing to do with the episode, but my dad had this exact radio in gray when I was young, and seeing it again reminded me of him. Memories. The music Andy's listening to brings the monster out of hibernation, and it takes the form of... Oh no. Hi Andy, won't you come play with me? Nope, 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 no, 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 nope, 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 fuck no, no. The doll nearly persuades Andy to go with her, but his mom turns off the electricity, the radio turns off, and she's sucked into the hell portal. Andy was in such a trance that he couldn't remember what happened, so he just keeps returning to the basement. Again, he's not afraid of the hand in the jar because... This time, the monster manifests as a shoddy green screen. Andy nearly makes it to the door, the smell of funnel cakes luring him in when the illusion is shattered and a skeleton hand shoots out to grab him. Oh dear, that skeleton looks pretty silly. I actually like the close-up shot in the carnival costume. He looks nice with that strong lighting. Then when you pull back, you see him just kind of vibrating around in a small empty area. He pulls the radio plug from the wall and the door closes. And then, an epiphany. Music. Make you lose control. Andy rushes to go find his mom, runs in Dakota, and... Holy shit! I know that looked really fake, but I've never seen someone get flat out punched before on any children's horror show. It's a little jarring. He does it again with a jaw-cracking sound effect, and I was honestly surprised. Koda also throws his bike into the road and it gets squashed by a truck. Come on, Andy, think. You can get back at him. Remember? The radio? Music. Andy sets up what appears to be fake speakers and a highly advanced sound system planning his revenge. Ooh, special delivery. He bonks Coda on the head with a wooden block and leads him into the cellar. Andy kicks on some heavy metal and the door glows red. Evil is powered by metal music, as my mom always used to say. We don't see the monster, but Coda appears to be seeing it in its true form, and he's terrified. After some time has passed and the basement gets quiet, Andy goes back down to find Coda, but only finds a brand new bike. The glow behind the door is now a calming blue, and the voice coming from it is more docile. It tells Andy he can have anything he wants, but under one condition. What's that? Feed me, feed me. As his sister comes home, Andy gives the viewer a fiendish look. Damn, Coda got eaten alive! That's a rough concept for anyone to fathom, let alone a little kid. The Midnight Society starts to pack up and leave, but Frankie is still missing. Eric says he'll wait for him, and then... <laughs> Paybacks are sweet! Uh, no. Revenge is sweet. Payback is a bitch. Right, final thoughts. When I was young, I felt like there were reruns of this show playing constantly. In fact, I thought I could recall most of them, but I don't remember this one at all. It makes me wonder if it crossed some kind of line with the censors, because it does seem a little more graphic than usual. You could argue that Are You Afraid of the Dark never really shied away from grim endings, but there is something different about seeing a person punch another person, fake as it was, and then witness them being eaten alive by some kind of off-screen creature. This is more of a trope you see in something like a Stephen King novel, as I mentioned earlier. It heavily reminded me of It, particularly because the bully got his comeuppance in the form of a grisly death, which is something that happens a lot in King novels. King loves to write revenge on horrible people. Even though Eric told the group that Andy did not feed his sister to the monster, it's pretty implied that he did. You don't make this face and then follow it with something chaste. I also got some heavy Little Shop of Horror vibes with the whole feed me to keep me alive thing and the fact that whatever this being is prefers eating people. The music is also particularly strange. Even when Coda is not on the screen, there's a lot of generic metal music going on. This episode feels really different and a little more gruesome than usual, and I think that's why I enjoyed it. I do think it would work better as a story specifically for adults or teens. I can see the potential of expanding the plot to discuss how the uncle took care of the monster until 
until his death, and describing how Andy would continue to feed it. Though this was still effective, even if it was all crammed into a 23 minute episode. It shocked me in a good way. I was not expecting a death, I was not expecting any kind of physical violence, though honestly that punch wasn't very fitting, so maybe that's not a good example, and I certainly was not expecting this. Nope, 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 no, 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 nope. Nope. I do think in not showing the creature's true form, it tones down the horror just enough for a young person. Obviously, they didn't show anything explicit in terms of gore, blood, or body horror, so even though the plot is pretty dark, I think it's just within the lines of children's horror, especially since it still has a lot of campy moments and questionable acting. Though, I can tell you, if I saw this episode as a kid, I would have nightmares for weeks. I was particularly fragile, which is now why I barrage myself with thrillers and murder mysteries. I have to make up for the fact that Lil Roses couldn't handle Are You Afraid of the Dark. If you have an episode you are just dying to see me cover, go ahead and leave a suggestion in the comments. Until then, stay spooky. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video on the Tale of the Dark Music, I hope you enjoyed it. I have more if you did, but first, I want to give a special thank you to all my patrons because they make it possible for me to keep this channel going. Thank you, my darklings, you rock. If you don't want to donate to the show, no pressure, I appreciate likes, comments, and shares. If you want to check out more of my videos, here's a couple recommendations. On the left, I have a video on Goosebumps, and on the right, I have the previous video I did on Are You Afraid of the Dark. I also have murder mystery reviews and adventure game retrospectives. Thanks again, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.